Technology for Noob. In this video, I am going to demo how to set up Visual Studio Code for your Python projects or let's say Django project and very important how to set up a debugger in your Django project. And we will also see different functionalities of Visual Studio which, which comes to it. For the start, I am going to start with creating a folder, let's say. And this is the name now. Now the first thing which comes as a handy from the Visual Studio code is the shortcut commands which it comes with. So what I mean is, so if you open a command prompt at the same, so I am at the same folder and now you have to just do code dot and when you do code dot, Visual Studio opens up and it gives you the system, I mean the Visual Studio running from that particular folder only. How cool it is. It, it's, it's really handy tool. And let's say you, you didn't do code dot, you just did code. It will just open the Visual Studio for it, for you. And whatever the last project you had will be shown in the Visual Studio code window. So I have also reinstalled the Visual Studio code. So it's a plain vanilla. It won't have any extensions installed. So it would be a good demo to explain how to set up your Visual Studio code. So now let's start with code dot, opens up the Visual Studio code. Now here, the very best thing which I like is the integration of the source control. So what you can do now is, if you click on this button, source control, that is kind of you can attach any repository or the sharing repository with this project. So let's click what it says, initialize repository, okay. Now it is asking me which, what, whatever. So what I have to do is, I have to add my repository here. So to start with, to, to clone any repository, what you have to do is, you have to use the fantastic feature of Visual Studio Code that is command palette. And the shortcut for the command palette is Control shift p What it does is, it gives you lots of operations which comes by default. It just the git should be installed in your local system. And also if you are in here, source control, you would see a lot of other options which are very specific for the actions in the git. But to start with the clone, let's start here. So git, when I do it, I say git clone and provide repository URL. To get the URL, I will go to my system and I will get the, so this is, this is now I have copied. I will just paste it. This is some sample previous work which I have done and repository location. So we just want to stay in our folder. So this is good. Now it will clone the repository for us and it's almost done and we just simply say open so once we are here we have to make sure that we are inside of one project so right now the the project which i have cloned has two folders so this is my main project and this is the supporting notebook files so just to start with i will reach to one of the pages so you have to keep your page open now the Visual Studio Code is trying to recommend me the best practices which I should be doing. So Python extension is recommended for this file. Yeah, please go ahead and install. Uh, what happens is it helps us on adding the resources, whatever is required for linting, debugging or any other features. So what is linting? If anybody wants to know, it's, it's the suggestions which you used to get when we write any code that there is a syntax error, there is some indentation error. That's what the linting help us on doing it. So it will take its time. It is installing for us for now. Once the installation would be over, we would start with the next step. So this, this extension got added now. Let's jump back to the code. So once we are here, so this is the folder structure. This is where we are. And Visual Studio Code also provides us the command prompt option here. And by default in some system, it would be PowerShell. So it's up to you, however you want to decide. Now the best thing is, we have to select a Python interpreter. And what is Python interpreter? It's nothing but select which virtual environment if you have in your system has to be selected. So same command palette, control shift P and simply say Python. And as you can see here, select interpreter. And once I'm here, it will automatically suggest me whatever environments I have in my system. And once you select it, it will store it forever. And this is what now it would be. So linter, pylint is not installed. Install, yeah. 
install using cook pip or conda it's up to us so i'm just selecting conda so we will see whether it get installed but we will move ahead with our so this is this is over now now let's try to do the debugging so you click on this particular icon where there is a bug and a play button and you say run and debug so it is installing so let it install for now so installation is done i will click run and debug and once i click it is asking me of many options as you can see it is asking what i am actually trying to do by using the debug am i trying to debug a python file a module like any packages or any kind of a project so as you can see it is asking me whether it is a django class or pyramid select on the django and we are good and as you can see it will it will do one error right now let's check so no such file or directory in our folder right so let's try again select the django and this time it it knows our folder so it knows our folder directory this is this is what is being here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the folder name of our directory also so our directory is folder name is machine learning so mpg web app. so m here mpg web app. and this is where it will find our file manage.py file and it should work now hmm because it has to be a relative so what i'm going to do is i will change my i will close this folder i will go to my app so this is where i am i will come to my folder app i will start the vs code here code dot so vs code is open now in the same folder where we are and i will click on the debug uh, before that i have to select a file through which it can understand it so right now i'm here now i will click on the debug run debug django what thing i have missed i have missed explaining it which python i have to use do that i will simply do control shift p python select interpreter python 36 and that is now done i will select on run and debug i will select django the specific module not found so if i say django and it gets stuck again so the reason is when we are in powershell it actually is not able to find the right python it is it is showing it here but somehow it does not work so what we need to do is we need to have to select our default command prompt so once i select my command prompt as my default so let's see again i will run debug again and i will click on django so it is taking its time let's see how much time it does take but one thing is very specific now that when we have changed it from powershell to command prompt and you see it started working now let's see how the so i will now let's see explore our app it's already started and our app is up so now this is where it is now let's say submit and everything works everything is fine now let's explore how to do the debug so you come here any any place and you click on a gutter that's what they call or the side of the numbers where it is written and you define your breakpoint now what gonna happen is let's say i am again at the same page i will click submit and it will go to our debugger set part now you can step in the normal debugging as it works or step out or you just simply play and and here you can select what kind of breakpoints you actually want to look out for so you can say if there is any raised exceptions if there is uncaught exceptions or views dot py and so many i i think it depend on the need and debugging is really important when you actually have to go through a lot of codes over the period of time and 
finally find out where exactly the error is happening you can edit something here and then you can check how how it behaves over the period of time you can hover over on the values and see what that value holds so let's do again so that we can see an example submit now all the variables you will be getting it here a small in description of all the variables before the endpoint so if i see the temp so temp has all the values and this is what it is then you step in and what's the value is in the temp you get here or you can see it in the left panel as well go on the next next execute it step in i will just close this one so temp2 is what the values are we executed it now test data got created so this is a data frame so it takes a little time but just to keep it and it will show you the contents of that particular variable and then finally execute it so that's how you also get to know what kind of variables are being maintained what are the values of those variables and so on that's the basic feature of the debugging in visual studio code now similarly there are so many other supporting things which comes with the visual studio code and the very specific thing is the support for extensions you can sub add any kind of support here and you with based on your requirement and it's a, it has a vast source i mean vast so number of developers who are adding as a support to this open source project and it's really something to work on i think that's all for this particular video we will see some other features of the vs code when the time comes like using the docker creating a docker adding docker functionality to your project all by using the visual studio code in some next week thanks for your time if you like my videos please consider subscribing to my channel if you come across with any doubts please let me know so that i can help you out or have a great day thank you